On the other side of this sticky note is a secret that could save you from making a major mistake with your fantasy novel. And when I learned about this, it was an absolute game changer for my own writing and it's helped me solve more tricky story problems than I can count. But to explain what this is and why it's so powerful, I first need you to picture an all too common scenario. Let's say you've got all these ideas for your fantasy novel. You've got world building details scattered across multiple notebooks, character concepts scrolled down on loose bits of paper that you're constantly losing, plot points jumbled up in God knows how many documents on your computer. Maybe you've even started writing your story, but you just don't feel like you know what your story is about. You just feel overwhelmed by all these ideas for your narrative and you don't know how to fix it. And this sense of overwhelm is a really common thing for you to experience as a fantasy writer. At the moment, I'm running cohort two of my fantasy outlining bootcamp, which has been incredibly fun so far. We're about a week into the program. And one of the students told me the other day that she has over 600,000 words of world building notes for her story. No wonder she feels overwhelmed. That's so much information. How can you possibly pass that down to something that feels cohesive and that gives you a sense of direction and clarity when you're writing your story? But the good news is there is a way out of this mess and it all comes down to what's on the other side of this sticky note, which is your story's premise. Defining your story's premise correctly, writing it down on a sticky note and putting it up on your computer where you're going to write will give you so much clarity about the direction of your narrative. Every time you face any kind of difficulty with your story, your premise is there to save you. But how can you actually write a good premise? And why is it such a powerful and important tool for giving you a sense of cohesive purpose and direction when it comes to writing your fantasy novel? To answer this, we need to cover four parts, starting with part one. What is a premise? Your premise is a one sentence description of your story that covers the most important details about your narrative. Things such as your main characters, perhaps some suggestion of their personality traits, what they want, a hint of the arc or the progression they might go on in the story. The premise should also contain the core conflict of your narrative, along with the basic direction of your plot. And also the stakes are an incredibly important thing to include in your premise. Basically, as I've written down on this slide here, you wanna make sure that your premise makes it immediately apparent to readers why they should care about your story and why it's worthwhile reading. Essentially, you can kind of think of your premise as almost this little micro outline that gives you a sense of guidance and direction as you're going through the writing process. So. To give you an example to show this in action, let's look at the premise for Jade City by Fonda Lee, which was probably the best fantasy novel I read last year in 2023. In the city of Jan Loon, where Jade grants superhuman abilities, the Cole family struggles in a bitter gang war against a rival clan, forcing them to confront their loyalties, ambitions, and the costs of power. To break this down more analytically, you can see here that the blue section I've highlighted here of In the City of Jan Loon refers to the story's setting. The yellow section of the Cole family and rival clan refers to the core characters of this narrative. The plot is conveyed by that red highlight of a bitter gang war. And the stakes there are the pink section where I write, confront the loyalties, ambitions, and the costs of power. So it's a very tight, it's a very concise guiding little line for your story there, but it clearly conveys all four of these key core elements. Let's look at another example here, Harry Potter by JK Rowling. When orphan boy Harry Potter learns that he's a wizard, he's thrust into a magical school where he uncovers a plot to return the world's most dangerous wizard to power. So you can see here, our character is orphan boy Harry Potter, highlighted there in yellow. The magical school highlighted in blue is the setting. Red is the plot. And what's the stakes here? You've noticed I haven't actually highlighted a section here in pink. I would say that's because the red section of plot is actually doing double duty of clearly establishing the stakes. It's saying that we need to stop this dangerous wizard because he's the world's most dangerous wizard. He's extremely deadly and we have to stop him from getting back to power. So this is kind of a really effective way to structure your premise to convey the sense of stakes and why readers should care embedded in your description or hint of the plot. Let's look at another example from my favorite science fiction book, Dune by Frank Herbert. I'm so excited for the second movie to come out. I really hope it lives up to the hype. So when young nobleman Paul Atreides moves to the desert planet Arrakis, he is caught in a deadly political game for control over a spice that grants prophetic visions. And you can see here how the different components of the premise are all broken down. Now, I'd like to point out something really important with this premise here for June. We missed a lot of important details in this premise. We missed the descriptions of the rest of Paul's family. So Duke Leto, Lady Jessica, who are all amazing characters in the narrative. We didn't even include the name of the primary antagonist, that is the Harkonnens, who are the rival to the Atreides family. We didn't talk about the Fremen at all. Nor did we talk about the giant sandworms, which are one of the most iconic and awesome parts of the Dune series. We didn't even really mention the prophecy around Paul becoming this kind of messiah-esque figure. And that's totally okay, because one of the most common mistakes that you might run into when you're writing the premise for your fantasy story is trying to stuff every single aspect of your plot 
into this premise. And that's a huge error because the whole purpose of this exercise is to give you a sense of cohesion and to boil your story down to the absolute fundamental core essence of your narrative. Your goal here is to give yourself a simple guiding light that will help you write your story. And you can't do that with a long, complicated premise that interweaves all of these different aspects. It doesn't mean that your story just has to be about this tiny one thing, but you should have an awareness as a writer of what that heart and that central core component of your story is about. And then of course, other things can spring off from that. Part two, why a great premise will save your novel. Say you're trying to decide between two different scenes in your story and you know that you can only pick one. Which one do you choose? Without a clear premise, that's gonna be a difficult decision to grapple with. You might end up choosing based on which scene you think is cooler or simply the one that you personally feel the most attached to. But with a strong premise for your story that's easily available to you because you've stuck this sticky note right on your laptop next to your writing document, the choice becomes a lot clearer. You choose the scene that aligns best with your story's core conflicts, character arcs, and overall narrative direction as outlined in your premise. So in this way, your premise acts as a compass, guiding your decisions as you go through the narrative. It helps you sift through all of those world building notes you've built up for this story to decide what's important to include and what should be left out. It makes sure that every character, plot detail, and magical element serves the story you're trying to tell. And by having it written down on a sticky note that's right next to you so it's easily accessible, it makes that clarity so much simpler to access. Of course, you don't have to literally use a sticky note. For me personally, I like to have a one-page guiding document which contains my premise but also has some details in there about my story's theme, my main character's arc, and a complete high-level synopsis from start to finish so I can quickly see which part of the story I'm up to when I sit down for each day's writing session. If you wanna see how I actually structure this one-page guiding document, I've linked to it in the description down below, or you can go to jedhern.com forward slash guide. That's gonna give you an example guiding document from one of my stories, and you'll also see a couple of examples where I've created this guiding document for various other fantasy novels as well. But whatever medium you use, whether it is the sticky note or whether it's just a one-page guiding document, have something physical that's next to you when you're writing so that you can quickly refer to it. Part three, how to craft your premise. Okay, so hopefully by now you can see the importance of writing a great premise, but what is the correct way to actually structure a premise so that it can serve you and doesn't make you more confused? In my experience, I've found that there's a sort of five-step method that I like to use to develop my own premise. And to kind of go through this example, I'm gonna show you how I developed the premise for The Thunder Heist, my ocean punk fantasy novel. Step one is to identify the core of your story. Start by looking at your main character and the sort of central conflict that they face. What do they want more than anything in the world? What's stopping them from getting it? From this, you might end up with something similar to what I've developed here for the Thunder Heist. So the Thunder Heist is all about this roguish pirate, Kef Cutmark, who wants to steal this device that draws energy from lightning. And this device does this to power the city of Zoroth, this city made from thousands of ships that are all lashed together to form this floating city on a monster infested sea. The second step is to add stakes. Why should we care? What are the consequences if your protagonist fails? Why is it so important for them to achieve their goal? This is really important to add a sense of urgency and emotional weight to your premise. In the case of the Thunder Heist, Kef is wanting to steal this device to get revenge against Zoroth because the city is incredibly corrupted in her mind and it's also done things to her that have wronged her in the past. And so she hopes that by stealing this device, she can kind of achieve a sort of vigilante style of justice against what this city has done against her. Step number three is to include the setting. Now, I've mentioned here that you should only do this if it's relevant. Not every story is going to be important to convey tons of details about your setting at a premise level. Again, it's all gonna depend on your specific scenario here. But in the case of the Thunder Heist, the setting is fairly important. It's set on this floating city ship with this industrial steampunk feel. Uh, there's sort of these mutant creatures that patrol the seas and the skies. And there's a few other mutants that I haven't mentioned there as well. And out of all of these setting details, even though I think the world building is incredibly important to the story, Really, it's just the fact that it's set on this floating city ship that I probably should be mentioning in the premise. Those cool details about mutant uh, killers and wingers are maybe less important. And this is why you really need to have the mindset of killing your darlings when you're writing your premise, because you have all these cool details in your fantasy novel, and you probably feel the temptation to try to cram as many of them as possible into your premise sentence. Really resist that temptation. Strip it as minimal as you can, because that's how you develop a premise that is of maximum use to you when you're writing. Which brings me to step number four of keeping it concise. And you can see here how I have sort of developed this premise for the Thunder Heist into the final product. Roguish pirate Kef Cutmark seeks revenge against Zoroth, a city that floats on a monster infested sea. 
by trying to steal a device that draws energy from lightning to power the city. Now remember, the premise is a tool for you as a writer. You might end up using elements of the premise to write a blurb for your story or to write a query letter for your story later, but the premise is not something you ever have to show to someone else. It just needs to be a guide for you personally as you go through the process. And as such, it doesn't need to explain absolutely everything about your story to the reader. Now at this point, you might have a question for me, which is, Jed, what if I'm writing a story about multiple point of view characters? How do I kind of incorporate them all into just a one sentence premise? And this is something I know a lot of my story coaching clients and a lot of students in my fantasy outlining bootcamp have struggled with in the past. But what I always tell them is you can still have multiple characters contained in a one line premise and Jade City shows a fantastic example of how to do this. So if we look again at the premise for Jade City, the bolded section here is a way to easily refer to multiple characters. So I'll read this out loud. In the city of Jan Loon, where Jade grants superhuman abilities, the Cole family, which is bolded, struggles in a bitter gang war against a rival clan, forcing them to confront their loyalties, ambitions, and the costs of power. So you can see here that the premise neatly summarizes a group of characters, that is the Cole family, by showing the central conflict that they're all struggling against, that they're all wrapped up within. And if your ensemble cast of characters in your multi-point of view fantasy novel are not struggling against the same unified conflict, whether it is a war or everyone trying to get onto a particular iron throne or everyone trying to destroy this one ring, it might be a sign that you don't actually have a unified story to tell here. Your story might be fractured and lacking a sense of cohesion and you might actually have two or three different narratives here instead of one cohesive narrative that is explored through all of these different characters. And again, this is the real value of writing down your premise is it will force you to articulate the central core of your story. And if you're struggling to do that, it might be a sign that you need to work on that aspect of your writing a little bit more. And then the fifth and final step in constructing your premise is to refine and test. Write your premise down, show it to your friends to get feedback. Feel free to post your premise in the comments of this video and try to find other writers who've done the same to give them feedback and hopefully they'll give you some feedback on your premise as well. Don't think of the premise as something you need to get right from the first time you try it. Instead, think of it as this organic living thing that you can use to basically explore different directions for your story, to test that your story is interesting and exciting enough to motivate you to write it. And then as you go through the process of continuing to plan and eventually write your novel, you can always keep coming back to the premise and further develop and tweak it and test it. As your story evolves, so too might your premise. The goal here is to have a guiding light and not a shackle. And then once you've done all that and you're pretty happy with how your premise is, write it down either on a sticky note or in a one page guiding document. I just highly recommend somewhere physical and put it next to your computer so that you can easily refer to it in the writing process. Next time you're stuck or you're struggling, look to that premise and use it as a guide. Rather than spending hours ruminating on the potential direction to take your story, having that premise there and written out for you to easily see means that you can just take one minute to look at it and get back on track because you know what the heart of your story is and you know what the ultimate end goal is of the book that you are trying to construct. And so many times when I've been writing and I've been feeling a bit lost, Having that premise there has saved me. It saved me from having to face writer's block because I know the direction I'm trying to head in. But that's actually not the full extent of how you should be using the premise in your fantasy novel. There's a fourth part to cover here, and that is using your premise to generate further questions. So in my fantasy outlining bootcamp, which I've linked to in the description down below, if you want to check out more details and apply for a future cohort, I teach this hourglass method of outlining. And essentially what I explain to my students in this program is the sense that when you're beginning the outline for your fantasy story, you kind of begin loose and big picture and vague and jumbled. So you start with things like just dumping down everything you know about your story. Perhaps you have different scene sketch ideas that you want to include. Maybe there's different concepts you have for your characters. You've got little bits and pieces of these people that might populate your novel. Perhaps you also have some world building ideas that are really cool and interesting to you, whether it's a magic system or a cool geography detail. Maybe there's a couple of hooks that you are thinking about, whether it's a particularly mysterious or suspenseful way to open your story, or whether it's a way to introduce a character that emotionally hooks your readers. And then speaking of emotion, maybe you kind of know what you want the driving emotion of your story to be. And the reason I've structured it as an hourglass here is because as you go through the outlining process, you're going from all these vague ideas and from having a huge volume and variety of things. And hopefully you're eventually funneling down until you hit this, the core of your story, the heart of what your narrative is all about. Your premise is a key part of your story's core, along with aspects like your story's theme, designing principle, and a few other bits and pieces as well. But once you hit this core, your work actually isn't done because now you get to expand back out again to look at things like how you apply that score to the structure of your story. 
how you develop your character arcs in more detail, how you actually structure and arrange these scenes together into a particular outline, how you develop cohesive world building that feels like it enhances the character's journey and is used to sort of challenge them or to progress them in their own change. And so as you funnel back out from this core, you're basically filling in the gaps here until you're at a point of enough understanding so that you are ready to write. And so you can see here that once you hit the core, your work isn't really done, but rather there is sort of an infinite horizon of expansion and understanding that you can flow out from, from that core. And this is really the power of constructing a great premise, is it gives you new questions to answer as a storyteller. So for example, with the Thunder Heist here, the premise that I created for this gave me a host of new questions that I needed to address, such as why does Kef want revenge against the city? What's stopping her from stealing the device? What interesting obstacles are in the way? How does the device work? Where is it kept? What are the people that are guarding it like? Is she gonna work alone to steal this device or is she gonna put together a thieving crew? Are there any particular internal demons or struggles that she'll have to overcome in order to be worthy of figuring out how to solve this story conflict? And what might go wrong in the process of her attempting to pull off this heist? If you wanna find out the answers to these questions, then go ahead and pick up a copy of the book and give it a read. You can find it on Amazon or anywhere else you get your books. And it also comes with a host of wonderful interior illustrations that further flesh out the world building of the Twisted Seas. I've also linked to the book in the description down below as well. Keep writing and keep striving. <laughs>